Welcome back to Talking Shop with Shop Saber. I'm Brandon, back with Jesse and Garrett for episode 44. Good morning, sir. Morning, gentlemen. Woo, 44. <laughs> Woo, 44. Don't sound um, so excited. Yeah, don't sound so excited there, Garrett. Don't say hi to everybody, just woo right there. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, everybody. I'm Garrett. Hey. Hey. Okay. So last week, we talked a little bit about focus and finding it. Yeah, I found and it. And we have not been focused at all this morning. <laughs> not this morning, no. Nope. We've been stuck in this janitor closet trying to find Garrett's bucket. Garrett, what are, what are you doing over there? Why are you always worried about me? He's he's picking, picking, I know, he's turned around. Bugs or I something. know, he's turned around picking bugs off the wall. monkey. I don't know what he's doing there. What the heck? Oh, man. You trying to get your hair to talk to the mic? Or what you got <laughs> I know, his head's like slammed into the mic. <laughs> he's not even paying attention. Yeah, oh. I'm red. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. Oh man! Super Find Bowl your Sunday. Focus. Hey, you know what? Find your focus. All right. Aaron Donald was offside on the sack. They should have had a first down. I don't know. Rigged. Didn't look. Rigged. Didn't care. I right. ate food. Right. <laughs> refs ruined the game. <laughs> Stop blaming the refs. You imagine playing a game <laughs> without refs? <laughs> yeah, could you imagine? That's like. <laughs> I kind of want to see that. The stolen cold stunner. Right. <laughs> Remember NFL Blitz? If you like, yeah, NFL Blitz, exactly. Actually, you know, that might not be that bad. I always liked running out of bounds and just jumping on top of the other lineman and just giving the old leg drop. Oh, gosh. Oh, man. Highest ratings ever. Yeah, it would probably be the highest ratings ever. We yeah. probably wouldn't have another game. but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so we did something kind of fun on Saturday as a group. We did. That was a blast. We went to uh, pro kart indoors. Went racing go karts. That was so fun. It was pretty I'm good still time. Sore. There was a lot of people. I walked downstairs yesterday. I'm like, yeah, hey, you guys do it. Everybody was like, I'm sore. <laughs> I feel like you should be in a neck brace. Yeah. Well, some of you guys, <laughs> some of you guys need to learn how to drive a go kart. Yeah. Hey, it wasn't my fault. He There's... put me on top of that wall. <laughs> how you end up on top of a wall? I don't know. I don't think any of you guys have any room for talking about my racing anymore. Because <laughs> you know what? I watched you guys with a go kart do a lot more damage. It was, uh, it was pretty funny. Well, at least I know what it feels like to be you when someone drives through you. Yeah. Right? It puts you into the wall. Yeah, it's see, sometimes it's just I've not. I've seen fault. you up on top of the wall though. That was well, that was sketchy. You definitely did something I have. I got done. yelled at. It wasn't even my fault. I'm like, <laughs> what do you want me to do? Like, <laughs> hey, you guy, don't get ran into so hard. Don't next get time. ran into yeah. so hard. Like, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just drove by the incident. Like, didn't see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have caused it. I did not cause it. There was nothing to do with me. I was on the other side of the go kart track. That was a lot of fun, though. Yeah, it was a pretty good time. We had a we had a good time as a group. You know, did you win? Um, I did not. Oh, well, Billy won. I was rooting for you. I appreciate that. Well, I don't know if you remember, but that last race, they gave me the world's slowest, slowest yeah. go kart. I even said that to him, like he could get out and run faster than this. That thing was, he's gonna be yeah. upset. <laughs> that is funny. I get to the car, and my wife's like, "You're upset." <laughs> I'm like, "I'm not happy about that one." I, I really wanted you to beat Billy too. I just wanted the cart that ran. I didn't care about that. Just I wanted the chance, but you had to keep the. Gas all the way on the floor. If you lifted, the car would just die. <laughs> I saw you there, like shaking back yeah. and forth, trying to get it going. Trying to, yeah, and the start had started to die, so I had to give it the old, you know, <laughs> shake to try to keep it going. It wasn't good. The old Bombardo shimmer. It wasn't good. Hey, Gert, didn't you go to Monster Jam or something on Saturday? Yeah, I had. To, I won free tickets, so I went there and watched big trucks do cool things. Ooh. Big trucks do cool things. <clears throat> free yeah. tickets. Just a quick question: Did you do your obligor, 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 obligor? <laughs> I suck at math. That big word that starts with yeah. O. Yeah, I, I don't think I did that. To be honest, <laughs> I didn't do that. No. Did you rev your engine like everybody when you leave? No, I'm not, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> You should have. Everybody leaving Monster Jam revs their engine. Come on. No. It's just like a thing. No. 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 I'm pretty sure that if you've ever been to a Monster Jam outing and you go to the parking garage to get your vehicle, you will hear every guy in there in his truck revving his engine after. Or Kia. Kia 150. Yeah. I think everyone's ears were already pretty drawn out from the noise in there. So. Pretty loud? Yeah. Was there a lot of trucks? Yeah, there's a lot of trucks. Ten bucks for one. two trucks. I've never been to one. Really? Yeah. Uh, it was oh, a good man. time. They were a good time. Yeah, my kids love going to that thing. And you get to watch big trucks do backflips. Super awesome. Gosh, I would just... Yeah, like, isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah, how big those trucks are, and then they're doing backflips. Yeah, that's unbelievable. 
It's pretty awesome. That's that's insane. Did they do any backflips while you were there? Yeah, I think there was probably three or four. See, that's so cool to huh. me. Like, at what point are you sitting in this, like, 1,700 horsepower giant truck? Like, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to do a backflip. Yeah. That's what it comes to this. mind. Let's try this. Let's see what happens. Let's go upside down. This move is intended for a backflip. No, thanks. No, I'm good. I'm going to keep all four on the ground. Out there practicing by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you do? Drive it into, like, how, how do you practice that? Well, I'm on the roof. Well, this went poorly. I have no help. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm in the trees. <laughs> like, where do you practice that? Hey, Uncle Joe, can I come to your property real quick and do a backflip in your backyard? Yeah, just go out behind the barn, watch yeah, out for the like, cows. How do you do that? But uh, today's episode... On today's episode, I felt like really, I felt like that was a talk show there. As the world turns. As the world turns on today's episode. Uh, no, today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about shipping and importing. Oh, sweet. Yay! Hey. I promise it's not going to be a There's people out there right now that have been waiting for a package for two months. And they're like, oh, I can talk about shipping. <laughs> yeah, shipping. I want to say, no, God, oh, God, God, if I see that UPS guy. Right, like it's his fault. Yeah, <laughs> like poor UPS guy. Like, I ain't going to his house. Throw eggs at him. Yep, nope. Um, I can tell you, UPS is definitely moving packages, though. Yeah. They all end up on my front step. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Amazon as well. Amazon's like, we're in business still. Amy's keeping us alive. I, dude, I've, that was pretty sweet that Bezos sent you a, a Christmas card, personally. That was pretty yeah. neat. Thank you. For thanks my for yacht. paying my mortgage this year. Thanks for my yacht. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Amy. Yeah. You weren't even on the card. It was just no, Mrs. Was it? B. Just Mrs. B. Yep. <laughs> but, uh, you know, let's talk a little bit about why we chose this topic. Yeah. Um, let's be honest. Shipping and importing is kind of a nightmare right now. It's crazy. Isn't it? Yeah. Just, I mean, you can't get anything right now, it seems like. You can't. You know, everyone seems to forget that it's a worldwide problem until right. they need it. Right. Like, it's not like shipping snuck up on us here. Like, we've had a shipping problem for months. If not, they over a year. And then you get people that, that are like, say, yeah. yeah, it might be over a year. Yeah. And then people are like, I can't get my part till when? I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, August? We have to wait till that company gets us apart. Right. Fortunately for ShopSaver, we've been okay. We really right. haven't run into too many issues. Right. As of late, we've ran into a few just because of our volume has gone up significantly. Yeah, it has. So, obviously, when you're demand goes up and the supply has not you're gonna end into a end up with a little bit of a shortage so right we're working through that right now um but you know it's a it's a worldwide issue that a lot of people are dealing with right now it but is. realistically what comes to mind for you guys when i say shipping or importing right now i would say my friends and family that do ups or usps and i think about this stressful job that that would be yeah the stress associated with the industry right that makes sense order early that's order what, early that's what i think right yeah. if i need something right now if i if i think i have a need i'm gonna order it early yeah for i'm gonna sure. account for that time that it's gonna take to ship it right yeah if there's a delay well i'm gonna order this thing early you expect that delay yeah for me it, it what comes to mind is looking for an, an alternative solution right like, I really heavily right now, whenever I order anything, I'm looking for other options. Can I go pick it up myself? Can I, you know, is it in stock, first off? You know, before before you'd order something, and even if it wasn't in stock, you weren't overly concerned about it. You're like, oh, they'll get it to me right away, you know? Right. Now you're like, well, if it's out of stock, like, I'm not even going to risk it. Like, you I know, won't, I, yeah. I just ordered a set of couches, right? We're looking for new couches. Called them up. I say, what's, what's the lead time look like? They said four to five weeks, right? Yep. I ordered the couches. I got an email the next day. Eight to 10 months wow the next day like you said four to five weeks now we're eight to ten months that's crazy yeah i mean for me that's exactly it i try to find like what is in stock because it's not even worth it you know like you have to start kind of buying different right now you almost have to shop local yeah right? yeah well that's a lot of it for me is i try to find what's in stock you know i try to find out what's available for me to to fit my needs this year, you know, yeah. um, I, you know, and I get lead times. I mean, I'm trying to buy a little bit more proactively. You know, I'm not trying to be reactive as much. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to make sure that I'm prepared ahead. I have things that I need before I need them. Yeah. Um, pre previously, it wasn't like that. I mean, I'm just speaking from my race car experience. You know, like, I, I'll be honest. I didn't stock a lot of parts before because if you needed them, you just drive to the store. They have them. You buy them and you put them on your car. Right. Like this year, it's been a little different for me. I've been kind of trying to pre-buy some of the most common parts. 
stock up a little bit. Just in case there's shortages. Yeah, shortages. exactly. Because, like, right now, there's parts available for race cars because the racing season is not really open up here. Right. So the demand for it isn't really there. You know, everybody's kind of in that, well, we'll wait until the racing season gets here, right? Where I'm kind of trying to get ahead of it a little bit, buy some of this stuff, so that way when racing season hits and the demand now goes up, I'm going to bet that we're going to start seeing some supply issues, and I would rather have what I need than to be in a situation where I need it and can't find it. Right, plus price gouging, right? That kind of protects you. Yeah. If it, if it gets crazy, things start True. to run short, you got it at a good price. Let me tell you about this transmission I bought in Arizona. Oh, boy. <laughs> so I was in Arizona, and I uh, lost a transmission the first day I was there. That's insane. Yeah, and I uh, normally these transmissions, I can buy them – all day long up here in Minnesota for 200 bucks, right? They're not expensive. Not they're just, yeah, they're just, they're nothing to them. They're not super high performance transmissions or anything. They're just 200 bucks. I could buy a dime a dozen over here. Like there's just tons of them laying around people. Every I mean, day. literally I, I had three guys at the track that told me if we were at home, he'd just give me one. Like that's how many they have, right? They're just these. Like a dime a dozen. Yeah. They're literally nothing, nothing transmissions, but I needed one at the track. Of course I didn't bring one with me. Super awesome fail by me. And so I needed to go to the parts guy at the track to get a transmission. Ouch. $800. Oh. He wanted for that transmission. That's insane. 800 for a transmission that I had two guys tell me they'd give me for free that if hurts. I was at home. And one that I have sitting on my floor in the shop at home that I paid $200 for. Yep. I was like, really? But it's, he looked me square in my eyes, square in my eyes, and was like, supply and demand. You right. have the demand. I have the supply. You want to drive back to Minnesota? And That's what he said get to your me. Tranny? He goes, I mean, you it's, you could always go pick yours up. I'm like, mm, gotcha. Got me. Here's my debit card. Thanks, Caden. You're not getting shoes this year, <laughs> or, or next, next year. year. <laughs> Amy, I shut the Amazon account off. No, no, I know better than that. <laughs> I would never do that. Gets you me, wouldn't need a tranny. Gets me in bigger you trouble. Have legs. It gets me in bigger trouble if I shut the Amazon account off. Happy wife, happy life. Yeah, that's what they say. Right. Happy wife, faster race car. Well, I think the Amazon driver might come after you if you yeah. shut it off. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my money, man? But, no, that's crazy, man. Eight hundred dollars for yeah. something. That's but I mean, that's my point. Is it's like that's what's happening right now. Yeah. That's a real, you know, that's a real scenario that I live through. Now I don't know, you know, I'm sure every one of you us could talk about a story. I mean, you have the couch story. Yeah. Garrett, God knows what he has for a story. You had some rims or was it a rims or was it a, I mean that was a, that was a year ago now, but uh I mean but that was that a, was a, that was an issue, yeah. Yeah, a shipping issue. I mean you yeah. got a shipping date. Yeah, and then and that date they changed. Never, yeah, they never really gave me a a date. Well they gave me a date and then I had to reach out to them multiple times. Yeah. What's going on with my package and they finally told me, like, we, we don't have it. So like, yeah. I, think, I think it was about four, four or five months that they finally came. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that's the point. Like, I had to haggle them. Yeah. yeah. And that's what happens all the time is you're sitting there, like, dealing with that ha- hassle and headache when previously it really wasn't anything we had to deal with. No. Right. You know, you start to think about that, and it's like, that's kind of a unknown territory, if you will, right? Right. Like, I used to get on Prime. I need something. And I could, you know, I could have it today at 5 o'clock. Yeah, have you gone on Amazon lately? Yeah, you can't get anything for weeks. Like, yeah, I mean, honestly. Prime is basically worthless at this point. I mean, it there's is. not a lot of Prime stuff out there for, like, the stuff you're looking for a lot of times. There's not. There's, there really isn't. Well, look at, I mean, as an example, like, Microsoft. You look at, like, the Xbox systems. Or, the, you know, if you look at PlayStation. Like, these kids are trying to get, you know, new systems. And you, you can't even find them. Like, I was trying to find my son one. Like, it's the new one came out, what, half a year ago now? Yeah, probably a little more. Yeah, roughly. maybe yeah. a year ago, dude. Yeah, but, I mean, when you think about that, it's been that long. I can't remember ever once in a previous generation of, you know, gaming systems for my children that I ever had to wait that long. Like, I, you know, I've always been the guy that's like, I'll wait the first 90 days out. Dude, let's, we can even simplify it. It's not even PlayStation. I've been going to Hy-Vee over by our place, right? It's where we grocery shop. Mm-hmm. I haven't been able to find a bag of coleslaw in a month. A coleslaw. Ba- bag of coleslaw? Coleslaw. Yeah, I just wanted to make some coleslaw for like some pork that we were making. You can't even find coleslaw. They sell coleslaw in a bag? Yeah, it comes in a bag. I always thought it came in like a, a I thought box. you could drive up to the drive through at KFC and they give it to you. Yeah, you can do that too, no. right? But I wanted to make it. But I Have you tried driving it. to KFC? Uh, no, sir. I bet they bought it all. I do like KFC Supply and coleslaw. Demand. Man, I might have to get some of that today. Supply and demand. Sounds good. KFC makes coleslaw. But yeah, so like I said, that's kind of what we're doing. You know, you're trying to like think ahead. You're trying to, you know, kind of tailor your life around like these demands, right? These 
kind of delays that you're running into with shipping. For sure. So, you know, I felt it was kind of important to discuss this because everyone, you know, every business, everything we do is affected by this problem right now. That's very true. Right? Absolutely. I mean, I can't tell you one person that I've talked to that's like, nope, no problems. <laughs> right. You know, like, no, seriously, like every business is dealing with it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, absolutely. E- and, individuals, everybody's dealing with it. Yeah. And some of it's, I mean, there's no product to sell you. Some of it, there's no material to make the product. Right. And some of it is just simply there's no people to make the product. Yeah, or deliver the product. A couple different issues going on right now. So, I mean, there's, there's really kind of a, you know, a few reasons why this exists. And so, you know, when you think about shipping in a business, you know, what does shipping affect in that business? You, supplies. Yeah, I mean, that's right. exactly it. Like, you can't get your supplies. Even if they exist, you can't get them, right? Right. Or they're delayed heavily. So, so let's get them on Tuesday. They don't show up till Friday. Well, what does that do? It delays your lead times, What's right? everything behind. Yeah, now your deadlines have changed, right? So that yep. affects your deadlines. Yep. So shipping can affect deadlines, supplies, um, obviously parts. You know yep. that's a part of supplies, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You're you're not going to have the parts you need, but it can probably affect you know on top of that your costs. Yeah, absolutely. Right, because right. if I can't get something done as cheap as I used to be able to get it done, I have to raise my prices, right? You do. Because supply and demand, they know yeah. that there's only a handful of these parts available, so they're going to raise the price on them. Right. You know, and some of that is also. Like I've noticed, it's a lot harder to get a discount on things right now or sales right now because companies know they don't have to. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Like you go in the store now and the sale price is what the normal price was. Yeah. Right? Try to get a deal on something. It's hard. I noticed that at Chipotle, they upped their steak burrito. Yep. It used to be, I think, seven seventy five. Now it's like it's over $9 now. And I'm like, what? And I'm yeah. noticing that at other places too, fast food. Like things are going up. It's yeah, weird. one thing I noticed, and I thought this is kind of unique, and again, I'm going to go back to this Xbox thing because, like I said, I was trying to find one for my son, and I was, you know, you're just searching online trying to find stuff, right? And Microsoft openly lists the retail price online, mm-hmm. $4.99. You go to Walmart.com, $7.99. It's, like, they're just straight up charging you $7.99 on Walmart.com. Yeah, they're like, if they get one, well, they can. They know right. they can, exactly, because, yep. like, people are going to pay it because do you want it or not want it? Right. And that's the problem that you run Somebody into. Somebody else is going to buy that yeah. if you don't want it. And that's, that's a problem of, you know, affected by shipping. Yep. If, if these things were a dime a dozen, that wouldn't happen. You're absolutely right. But because of the supply chain issues that are out there, the shipping delays, things like that, you, you don't have it. I got it. You want it. Yep. Are you willing to pay for it? Yep. So, I mean, you start to see some of that. So, it does affect cost. Um, customer service. Customer right? service. I mean, well, that's exactly it, too, because people are – these people are like and, – and I try not to ever be like that in business, but unfortunately not everybody's like that is people kind of get arrogant when it comes to it. I agree. They get to the point where it's like they don't have to take care of you anymore because what are you going to do? Right. Someone else is going to call. Yeah. Someone else is going to buy. Like we're so busy. We don't care. You know, like, and that, I hate that attitude, dude. That's my like pet peeve in business. Like I'm never too business to take care of a customer or to talk to a customer. Right. You know, does that mean I'm going to give you everything you want all the time? Like, no. I mean, the reality is also customers try to manipulate that too by, you know, us being, you know, kind, sometimes people try to take advantage of that, right? Yeah, but there's always going to be people like that. Yeah, there's always people like that in the world. So the reality is, I mean, there is give and take everywhere. But a lot of these businesses that I go into and you frequent them, you know, they, there's just no personality there anymore. There's no customer service. It's just like, this is the price, take it or leave it. Boy, you're not kidding. Like, that is one thing I've noticed. There is no help. There's no customer service. There's Correct. no interaction. Yeah. There's no smile. There's no nothing. Yeah. And then and, you get to the register, right? Yeah. You got to check yourself out. Yeah. Hey, thanks for coming to Walmart, Jesse. Hey, no problem. Maybe I'm weird, but I actually like that. I like being able to scan all my own stuff. Cause, I hate it. Cause I hate I'll it. get those people that will bag my stuff, and they'll put three things in the bag, and then they'll go on to the next bag. I'm like, no, I can fit 12 things in one bag. I, I tell them every time, fill that bag as full as you can get it. And they do. Just I, fill I, it I like back up. I bag my own stuff. I'm a big boy. Yeah, that's, I mean, but you know, look at that. That's a generational difference there, though. Like, Garrett's generation has kind of a, you know, embraced that. That's like the new way of doing it, right? They're expecting to do it. Where I think you and I kind of grew up in the, you know, kind of the generation where it's like, that was weird. Like, yeah. when they first came out with them, we were all like, what? Like, we didn't get it. Like, Garrett, I'm sure his entire life, self-checkout's been a thing. Yeah, it's would pretty close. You know? So, like, to him, it's normal. So. I hate it. Yeah, I mean, you know, and I think about this, like, going back a little further. drive throughs right? Yeah. Like, drive throughs are normal to me. Yeah, absolutely. But I think about when I was a kid. Like, we never went through a drive-thru. We always went in. 
Always. Like, I it was rare I, we went through a drive-thru. I honestly can't remember. Like, yeah. I remember, like, with my grandpa, yeah, we always went inside. Yeah. We everyone through a drive-thru with him. Correct. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, I think it's that generational, like, you just grow up with it, you know? So it's normal to you. I guess. But ringing myself out, that's something I won't get used yeah, to. I don't well, like it. Yeah, I try to give myself discounts. They don't work. Yeah, I sit no. there and punch in little coupon codes. Yeah, I make them up. Nothing. Yeah, I know. Nothing ever works. I do like talking to the person at the register when I'm checking out, though. Can I get a Jesse discount? What is that? It's 10% off today. Oh, Jesse, you look good today. Oh, thanks so much. Don't like, lie to me. Just judging yourself Don't at the counter. Yeah. All I'm saying is you never have to worry about someone being too slow or not bagging your stuff correctly. That's you exactly the problems that I have when I self-check out. You do it you know, yourself. Scan you can, something and a little you can do it however you want done. Yeah, I'm too slow and I bag it wrong. Well, right? that's your issue. That's my problem. It's like every time I'm there, the little light will come on. Need assistance. The <laughs> clerk's coming to save you. Thank you. Shine the bat light, please. You know what that does? What's that? This guy's an idiot. Exactly. That's what it says to me. You got the guy behind you just breathing heavy. <sighs> get out of here. Hurry. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm sorry. Sorry. I don't know how to use this machine. Wasn't born in 2000. Yeah, I don't know what happened here. No, uh, it's Garrett behind you. Come on, guy, get right. going. <sighs> Why don't you just scan it for me? I don't know if I want paper or plastic. Right. Oh my God. But yeah, so I mean, shipping in a business affects a lot of different things. You know, obviously the attitudes, the customer service, deadlines, costs, parts, supplies. You know, there's a lot of things that it can affect. Um, but you know, let me ask you guys something here. Do you remember when you could just buy something and know it would ship every time. Yeah. Those are the days. Right? Like, took it for granted, for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, you knew if you ordered it, it ship and no worries. Right. Now you're like, I don't want to order it. You're like, three to five days. Yeah. His patient's building. Yep. I didn't Can't even wait. check. Like, back in the, like, back in the day, I'm saying it, there it goes. Back in the day, like, I never checked. I'd order something online and just know that it was going to show up, so I didn't check the tracking. Right. I never cared to go back and check my order confirmation. I didn't care. Right. Like, It'll be here. I know in a couple of days it's going to be awesome. Yep. But then now you're like, did, did, did it process? It's been four months. Yeah. I just four, gotta speaking need- of four months, true story. My driver's license. Yeah? Yeah. You know, me and my wife, we changed addresses this last year. You have to do that when you move. Yeah. Yep. So I, we had to go get our licenses changed. You yep. Know? And I still don't have a license with a valid address on it. What? I still have that piece of paper thing. You're for real? For real. I remember when you went and got that. Four months ago. So you, you still, still have, have it? I still have the paper in my pocket. I want to call somebody. I did call yesterday. You know what it says? What does it say? We're processing. Oh, boy. You still have the holes, like, punching your ID then? With the oh, yeah. Yeah, it says void. Yeah, that's what those holes say. Holes, holes say. You know that, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to show you. It says void on it now. Yeah, it does. Well, yeah. I had one at one Kinda point. Neat. I just don't specifically remember the wording. Yeah, it I, says void literally. Oh, now I just broke it. See? It says void. Yeah. Void. I don't, yeah. no, I don't, that doesn't say void. It I says void. That's just holes. No, it says void. It spells out the word void. Um, <laughs> nevertheless. But yeah, four months I've been waiting on my driver's license. That's crazy. Like, I don't ever remember changing an address and ever having to wait four months. No. Like, it's a long time. Yeah. But like Brianna, she, she put her conceal and carry permit in yesterday, and they told her it would be 30 days plus shipping. Mm. I said, well, you'll see that in 2023. You won't. You it's won't. so fast. It's it. Seriously. Which is crazy that they have to add in the That's shipping. That's fast. Now. Like, plus shipping. You got 30 days plus shipping. Well, so yeah. It I mean, well, think about it. We do the same right? thing, though. We tell everybody, like, once it leaves our dock. That never used to be a thing. Though. Yeah. Like, I never <laughs> used to have to tell somebody that, like, once it's picked up by the f- carrier, that it's out of our control. Like, it was never a conversation I ever had to have. Now I have it weekly because, like, I literally can't, ex- you know, I can't express how much we can't control. Right. Like, Literally, they, we put it on a truck, and when it leaves here, like, I'm out of control at that point, you know? Like, we have to tell people that. Because before, I'd put it on the truck, and it drove straight from here to there, and it was easy. Right. But with the shortages of everything, like, now, like, the trucks, they don't have as many drivers. They have more loads. Like, I can't guarantee that, like, the timing is going to be the same as it used to be. No, you can't. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Right? Do you remember when we did not have supply chain issues? Uh, Yeah. That was cool. It seemed like it was a decade ago. It seems like a long time ago. But I remember 2019. Those were the days. Those were the days, Garrett. Garrett, I was just a young Padawan. A what? You said a polywop. Uh, it's a Star Wars. Poly- I guess what? you guys haven't seen Star Paul Wars. Paul Walker? Is that what I said? I don't think you want to be him. No. 
Are you Dancing with the Padawan? Stars? No, it's a Star Wars thing. Star Wars. Dancing with the Stars, Star Wars, all the same thing. <laughs> sounds, sounds similar. <laughs> Started the same thing. They're all in the stars. The Padawan is right. But yeah, you know, and really, I mean, I think like, this is an important time to say, enter USA-made products, right? Right. This is another benefit of buying USA-made products. Absolutely. I mean, it doesn't mean all your problems go away, right? USA products still need shipping and still need, you know, materials. Right. But there's one less level of shipping, right? Absolutely. Right? Doesn't have to cross the ocean. Yeah, but I mean, when you think about that, like think about the benefits of buying US made products. Like, you know, it's just obviously we're shop saver, so let's say shop saver, right? Yep. Like where's the advantage of buying a shop saver versus buying somebody's imported machine? It doesn't have to go through customs, right? You're gonna get it faster. One less level of shipping there for sure. Right. You always have communication with someone. Yeah, correct. You can get an update you know, extent, a little easier. Yeah, a little easier. Because, you know, that is a point. Like, you get these other companies where you call them and they're like, well, we placed your order, but we don't have an update from our supplier. Yeah. You know, and it's a lot harder for that because they're waiting on a lot more supplies. I mean, we still run into those scenarios, right? Yep. You're waiting on certain suppliers to provide you updates. But the reality is, is we have a lot less of those suppliers. So a lot less answers we're waiting on. Right. You know, we could probably narrow it down, at least give you a better timeline, you know? And get you close. And the other thing is we control more of our destiny. So when parts do show up or when materials show up, like we can control it, right? Right. Where you don't have that luxury when you're importing products, you know? You have no control, yeah. really. You have nothing. Like you're just kind of 100% at the mercy of what that importing company over there is doing or exporter, excuse me. I can chime in on that. I okay. ordered a jersey from China. Uh... November, I believe. No, no, no. I got it two weeks ago. No. Yeah, I did get it two weeks ago. No. Don't buy from China. It took a um, long time. I it took about three months. Yeah. No worries. It wasn't worth it, sir. No. So now you should have probably just bought the USA jersey. Right? Yeah. Now I know. Yeah. I've made a huge mistake. So it's, a, it's a lesson. Good yeah, lesson. That's a good lesson. Exactly. Because, you know, you have less importing concerns with a USA made product. Yep. Like that's the real benefit. Like you get these companies even, there's some companies out there now that, you know, they, there, there's been companies for years that do this, but they, they're a USA company, but they bring in, you know, imported product, right? Yeah. They, so the companies resides here in the U S but part of their machine, you know, their frames or, you know, part of their machine, you know, maybe it's the controllers, you know, things like that. They come in from overseas. Right. Well, your entire machine can't start until those things arrive. Right. Yeah. So it still is a delay. Even though you bought it in the U.S., like you're waiting. We're going to get started on your machine right away. Yeah. As soon as your frame gets here. As soon China. as it gets through, you know, China. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, no, like you, you got to like think about that. So that's where the USA made products, I think, make a big difference. Uh, this pandemic, this shipping issue, the shortages has really pushed people back to American products. Oh, my products. God. It's crazy. That is the one benefit that I will say, you know, has come out of this. I, I do think so, too. I think a lot of people realize the benefits of USA made. I also love that it's really, you know, it's had a lot of people start their own businesses. A lot of people have done things to bring product in-house in their a businesses. Lot of people. You know, like, it's not just buying USA Made, but it's building USA Made. Yeah. Like, we have seen a lot of people that are starting to build their own products inside their own facility because they just can't wait anymore, right? Yep. They're investing in people and materials and equipment to perform a task because they're just tired of waiting on an importer. Right. Or an exporter. As much as this stuff sucks, as much as it, it really affects people, it, it's awesome to see people make that change. Though, like, yeah. I'm going to start my own business. I'm going to take this on myself. Yeah. I'm going to be the solution, right? Correct. I'm I talked to a guy. for it to come in. Yeah, exactly. I talked to a guy the other day, and he said that. I mean, he, he, I wrote him down here. It's on my piece of paper. I wrote down the three things he said was he wanted less importing concerns. He wanted less customs delays. And he said, I want less outsourced issues. Right. He goes, if I'm going to have an issue, I want it internal. Yeah, absolutely. I can control that. I can try to problem solve that. Right. He goes, but when I have no clarity into the problem because it's somebody else's problem, he goes, it really affects my business. I can't yeah. provide customer service to my customer when I don't have any idea what's actually happening. Yeah, it ties your hands. It does. Yep. And that's the difference is like when you buy from the USA made company, it doesn't mean you're going to have zero problems. Right. But it does mean that your service is probably going to be significantly better. Oh, for sure. For right? sure. Right? I mean, yep. That, that's the biggest thing about it is you, you generally are going to get a better level of understanding of what's going on, and you're going to have more people working in your corner. Right. Because let's be honest, if you buy something from overseas, do they give a crap about who you are? Not at all. 
I mean, they really don't. No. They don't even know who you are. They don't, they've never talked to you most of the time. They're, they're not going to think about your needs. They don't care. It doesn't matter to them. Right. There's, there's nobody selling me something from China that's sitting up at night, you know, concerned that I'm not getting my product. Correct. They don't care. They, they're not going to worry about taking care of Jesse, right? Right. They might think about their wholesaler, right? Yeah. But they're really not thinking about you, the end user. No, they don't care. And the difference is, like, with a company like ShopSaber, we think about the end user. Like, that's our only care. Yeah. Right? We don't have a distributor. We don't have a wholesaler. Like, no. the only person that we're thinking about is getting product into our customers' hands. Absolutely. And I spend a lot of time worrying about that. We all do, I think. Yeah. You know, so does that mean you you won't have delays in, at all in your business? No. No. I mean, absolutely not. That's crazy. If you think that, if you think it's going to be that, the reality is, you know, you're, you're going to see a lot more issues in your, yeah, your you're life. Dreaming. That's, yeah, you're dreaming. exactly. You're going to have a lot less issues, though, I think. That's, not, that's fair to say. It'll be easier to fix your issues, yeah. You know, you control more of your destiny in-house, too. You do. So that'll help. You know, buying equipment to do things in-house will help reduce outsourced burden, right? Oh, or so, hurdles. so much easier, right? You know, buying equipment will help you take more away from your competitors who don't have the same abilities. Right. Get that right? leg up on your competition. Yeah, think about this, okay? Just as an example. If I'm a customer and I'm going to go to shop A and shop B, right? Mm -hmm. Shop A builds the sign in-house. Shop B outsources their sign. And shop B is waiting on the outsourcer, right? Yep. Well, the problem is what if they, you know, what if they're delayed? What if they can't get material? What if they have labor shortage? Whatever. They can't ship it to the person, right? Right. Which one of them can probably control their destiny a little bit better? I want to go to shop A. Yeah. I mean, the guy who can do it in-house. So, yeah, he still might have material shortage. Or a labor shortage, right? Right. But the reality is it's all in his control. Right. It's he can be searching he can out the material. He can try to find the material himself and do it himself. He can cut something himself. Right. The, the employees he does have have the ability to do it. Where the other company doesn't necessarily have as much control. Yeah, absolutely. They can make phone calls for you. They can and keep how, calling, keep calling, keep calling, but it doesn't do anything. Right. How uncomfortable, too, being shot B, right? Customer calls you. You're stressed. you got to call the outsource guy. Hey, what's going on? You're just the middleman. At yeah, that you're point. playing middleman. Exactly that. You know, you got to get rid of the middleman when it comes to that stuff. It's inefficient. Yeah. You know, I always say good customers will will shop if you can't take care of them. Your best customers that you have still have a job to do. Yep. And if you can't take care of their needs, they're gonna shop. Absolutely. It's the unfortunate part of business. I mean, they're they're gonna have to. But good customers will give you their business as long as it won't hurt theirs. Yeah. So if you can do anything in your power to help them, like, and that's where that importing and shipping delays, I mean, you got to think about that stuff. Like, in the world we live in today, we got to think about delays. We got to think about shipping. We got to think about, you know, that stuff ahead of time. Get ahead of it. Give your suppliers a chance, too. You know, that's what I always say is, like, don't order something because you need it next week. Order it because you need it next month. Right. That's what I was saying in the beginning when you said, what do you think about shipping, right? Yeah. Order now. Be sure. prepared. Yeah, no, exactly. You know, what does the future of importing and shipping look like? Like, really? Oh, that's, I don't have a crystal ball. Nobody knows that answer. No. You know, nobody really does. The reality is it could be simply, you know, it could be simply delays and less overnight services. I mean, that could just be the new normal, right? Right. It could be. Or the you're going to pay an arm and a leg for Correct. overnight. Yeah, exactly. It's going to skyrocket that stuff, you know. It's already expensive, right? Right. I can't imagine even going higher. Let me ask you a question. Is this what leads to the slowdown in the world? It could. Think about it. Like, Think, I want you to think about this, like truly. Think about how, you know, everybody, there's songs written about this. I mean, there's definitely songs I know off the top of my head that we're singing about how the world keeps, you know, turning faster and faster and faster every day, right? Right. And there's songs out there that talk about, we used to work five days a week and the weekend was off, right? Yep. Now you work, you know, then it got to, you work six days a week. You know, people worked a lot of Saturdays. Now it's seven days a week, right? There's not a day that you, people aren't working, right? Pretty much. Like it's just around the clock all the time, right? The world has just continuously got busier and busier and busier. Yeah. Well, eventually something has to change. Right? I mean, it's, it lasts forever. It, that, well, that's my point. It's like there's always that evolution of things, right? Yeah. So our, our evolution was to get busier. That's right. Now our evolution is to get maybe slower. Yeah. Maybe this is the reverse side of it. Like we got so busy, now this is going to kind of condition people to believe that, like, okay, it's okay to slow things back down. Yeah. We're so accustomed to Amazon Prime two day shipping, we'll have it in two days. Yeah. And now it's like, well, maybe that's not always going to be possible. We got to. We gotta slow her down a bit. Yeah, so maybe this is it. Like that's what I'm saying. Is this the is this the what leads this the world slow down a little bit, you know, like change the pace? Time to learn a little patience. Yeah. Is this the start to the next, you know, ten years of advancements? You know, what what's gonna change the next ten years? Like think about that. Right. Go back ten years ago. Think about all the changes that we've seen in the world. Right. Drone delivery. Yeah, what's gonna happen in the next ten years now? Right. Like here's the thing. 
this industry, these industries aren't going to give up. No. Right? I mean, shipping industry isn't going to just give up. They're going to close they're, doors. I guarantee. Yeah, they're going to develop new processes. And what are they, like you said, is it, is it drone deliveries now? Yeah. That's what we're going to start seeing? Yeah. Because then it's, you know, you don't have the people side of things, so you don't have to worry about the labor force. Is it, you know, who knows? I don't know the answers to that. You know, obviously, if I did, I'd be investing in it, you know, and that would be the answer. But we don't know. Right. And I was watching something the other night it was speaking of drone deliveries and yeah. how things are advancing. There was a, a like an e- emergency show on whatever I can't remember what the name of it was, but they have drones. Like if you're having a heart attack and the ambulance is too far away, they'll fly a drone to you with a defibrillator yeah. to your location, and someone will defibrillate you. Right? Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that's exactly it. Like, I think about you know the next five to ten years, and you, you know I think there's going to be a heavy push for automation. I really do. I believe automation, like we've already seen it, yeah. But I think it's going to be the next five, ten years is going to be even crazier, like robots and. Well, you look at it now. You walk into a Taco Bell, right? There's no employees at the front. That's exactly it. You have to go to the kiosk and order at the kiosk. Panera too. Yeah, I noticed that the other day. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. There's less people right now. That's the problem. The labor force. There's less people. You can't find people to work. So you start developing systems that do it for you. Yep. You know, robotic. You know, welders exist. Obviously, robotic paint systems. You know, but now are you going to start seeing robotic shipping? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like maybe that's where Autonomy this thing goes. Shipping. Ro- you know, robotic. Obviously, we've, we've already seen Tesla as an example. Self-driving vehicles, right? Yep. Are you going to start getting to that point where it's truly, you know, truly human, you know, interaction is not any longer in the vehicle? You know, you can have these driving centers mm. and people drive multiple trucks at one time. Yeah. You know, because they're in one room, kind of like a dispatch center. I don't know. It just, I mean, it comes stuff that comes to my mind. Like how, how far can this thing go? Part of me doesn't want to see it go that way, right? Yeah. Like, because people need to work. If you automate these jobs, all of them. Yeah. At some point, you got to have people working. Yeah, no, exactly. And, you know, I think the next, you know, five to ten years, you're going to see equipment, you know, being a good investment. I, I think it's a great investment now. Those, inqu- those with the equipment get the work, right? Right. Those who can control more of their timelines will win, right? For, for sure. Take that step now. I do think, though, you're right, though, on the, you know, I don't want to see it go that way, to be honest. Like you said earlier, I, I don't want it to go that way, but I do want it to go that way at the same time. Right. You need a solution. Because I think it will make the world more efficient, having equipment and doing all this stuff. But I don't think it changes the jobs. I'm going to be honest, because there's still going to be, it, the shift in work is going to just be a different area. Like right now, the we don't have enough workers for the work we need to get done. That's very right? true. Yeah. So it's like you have to reduce that demand so you can utilize the workers you do have, right? And not yeah. overstress every single person. So, you know, I think it'll allow, you know, more people to accomplish things a little bit more convenient. I, I don't know if that's the way to explain yeah, it. Yeah, I, like, I see both sides of it, right? Like, think about it. They, all these robots, right? They still need somebody programming. They still need somebody behind the scenes, you know, like the maintenance. There's still stuff that goes on with them. Yeah. But it's less people that are required to, you know, you can run a whole line of people, you know, a whole line of product through with robots. And it's a lot easier to have only a handful of people running that versus needing 50 people to run that same project. There will always need to be human interaction as far as automation goes. You won't, you'll never be able to have all robots because if they make a mistake and you have someone overlooking that, and that's the issue with starting is it'll be a slow transition into robots. It won't just be all out. Well, I think someday it will be. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I think AI is a real thing. I was going to disagree with you as well. I think, I think someday you could see that. Yeah, where you, yeah you but it's going to take time. Oh, yeah. Like I said, We're it's going to be a slow process. One, I, yeah. think. I mean, artificial intelligence is a real thing, obviously. But it's like you got to get to the point where the, is it going to be that they can make the decisions for you? You know? Like, right. I mean, look at it. Google. They somehow know what the heck we're talking about, and they can – pull it up you know what i'm saying like it exists like the technology is there that they start to like manipulate the world based on what you i mean there's some documentaries that i've watched that are pretty mind-blowing on how that stuff works yeah you know and it's like man like when you start thinking about that like where are we going like so this automation thing is the next i think five to ten years if you're not thinking about automation right now you're not doing stuff with automation right now i think you're behind you're behind yeah i mean like you have to start automating and whether it means upgrading your mills or upgrading your saws or you know upgrading your routing abilities your plasma abilities like there there's these machines are the future there's no doubt about it yeah and if you're not thinking that way you're behind right yeah you're, you're gonna have to adapt some way somehow yeah because i think shipping automation is coming i really do i'm a firm believer in that um you know i think we'll get back to somewhat of stocked shelves i do think we'll get there 
but I do think you know, it's going to become a little different than it used to be. It's not just supply and demand like it used to be. Right. Yeah, I think you're going to, you know, we used to have what's called just-in-time shipping, right? Yep. We had enough stuff that we could just ship it to you when you needed it, right? I think we'll be more more of like an order in advance kind of situation now where you, you think about it a little bit further ahead. It'll be there when you need it. I think you'll have them in stock and everything, but they won't. you won't see as much on the shelves. I agree. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the grocery stuff. Think about that already. Like you call, you go online, you order what you want, you do your thing. Like they have the groceries all picked out, ready to go at a time. Yep. It's not just walk in, pick everything out anymore. Right? I mean, some grocery stores you still do that. I mean, a lot of people still do it that way. But the reality is, there's a lot less of that. Like people. Oh yeah. You know. See, I still go to the store. I'm the guy that has to go in and push my cart and get my stuff. The experience. But there are far more like employees shopping for other people. Correct. Than there are people actually shopping. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's what you think about. Like that's what that's, and then. That's going to get automated someday. There's going to be, you know, the Amazon, if you will, of grocery stores, right? Yep. You're going to go online, order what you want. The robots are going to pick everything out for you, put it in the carts or in the baskets or whatever, you yeah, know? whatever. And then either they're going to ship it to you or you're going to show up and pick it up. Yep. You know, that's, that's where I see this thing. You know, I just think, like, all this automation is, is coming. Like, I think there's so many things that will change, you know? Well, there's no doubt about it. You're seeing it happen. You're watching it. There's, there's no way around yep. it. Yep. You know, I think that's where, I mean, you're seeing a lot of that stuff. So I really think that there will be a lot of shipping automation coming. Um, I do think we'll get back to some stock shelves, but I think the shelves, you know, the public shelves are going to be less. I agree. I mean, I just think, you know, everything is getting more condensed, right? As the world keeps expanding, there's, there's only so much land, right? Right. So eventually you end up in a situation where now you've got to make use of the land you have or make use of the, you know, space you have. And so you have to condense things down and you have to start fitting more in less area. Yep. And that's what you're going to start to see. Yeah. Just like the game of Catan. What? (laughs) You guys haven't played that? No, dude. Oh, okay. Never mind. Hi-ho, Cherio. Disregard. Sorry. Very popular game. I guarantee there's a lot of listeners who have played it. (laughs) Yeah, Twister. Oh, Very popular game. Like Chris (laughs) Catan? No, a board game. Oh. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Chris Catan. Garrett doesn't doesn't even know who that is. Not a clue. But... I mean, that's kind of where I'm at today. I like, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about American made, you know, I want to talk a little bit about shipping. I want to talk about importing. Like, I think we covered all of that. Yeah. I mean, hopefully, you know, everybody starts to think about that. Like the shipping world is the shipping world. Like let's start getting ahead of it. Let's start working together. You know, let's stop adding stress to each other's plates. Everyone's in the same boat together. Yeah. Right? We're all doing the same thing. Like, trust me, like nobody wants to delay your order just to delay your order. Patience. Patience yeah. is huge. Patience is huge, but let's start getting things out in advance, you know? Yeah. Don't put that demand on people as much if you can. Obviously, I get it. Some things happen. There's nothing you can do. But the reality is try to give people as much time as you can so you don't put yourself in a stress situation, right? Right. You know, you know what, what are you doing to protect yourself? Let's just start there. You know, you got to start thinking about that stuff. You know, get automated for 2022. We've talked about that. Yeah, don't wait. Be prepared. You know, start getting prepared now because if you start trying to order in November, there's zero chance you're probably seeing something in December. And everyone knows us, yeah. right? It's, it's been two years. It's not yeah. like it's going to change next week. Start Christmas shopping now. Right. No, I mean, seriously, though, I think you got to start getting ahead of it, you know. And, you know, how are we getting our shops, you know, more efficient? What are we doing? What are you doing? Yeah, I mean, you got to add automation. We got to do things. You know, we got to expand. Like, there's things you got to do. Shopsaver's doing it. I'll tell you that much right now. We're expanding. We're doing some, you know, automation upgrades. We're, there's a lot of stuff we're there's doing. There's people everywhere. People everywhere. But, you know, what can we do to control our days more? Right. Bring it in-house. Do more there, you know? Right. Stop relying on the importing and the shipping, you know? Take control. Take control yep. of your business. Come up with a plan, Yep, right? come up with a plan. Demand it. Demand that plan, you know? Yes. Like, you should be able to go to every department in your company. Maybe it's just you. So you go to yourself one area, and then you go to yourself in the other area. But the reality is, whatever it is, you should be able to lay out a plan for your departments. You have to lay out a plan for your departments. If you want to yeah. be successful, Correct. you have to. And then you should pick up the phone and call ShopSaver. You should. Or you should go to the internet. Garrett, what's that website? ShopSaver.com. Yep, the interconnect. Yeah. You can go out there. The interweb? Interweb. You can go to the AOL.com. That's not even a thing anymore, is it? You've got mail. It's not even a thing. Remember when you used to be able to change his voice? (laughs) Right. Do you remember that, Garrett? Yeah. No, you don't. He he does. Did you ever, ever in your life, use dial-up internet? You've got mail. Have you ever used dial-up internet in your life? Yeah, when I was young. You did? Yeah. You actually used dial-up? Yeah. You did the... Yeah. Really? Not that. 
Dad, get off the phone. I'm on the internet. Dad, I need to go on the internet. Get it off wasn't the phone. long, which was nice, but I, yeah, I got, I got a taste of it. I got a taste of it. When you were what five? And then I four? didn't like it, so then I was like, all right, let's just do web. So now so we just do one. web 2.0. Yeah, you're yeah. the one that just did web. I, yeah, I just do web. Help you hear Jobs that? out. Yeah. Just do web. Don't worry about the rest of it. Just do web. Me and Steve Jobs collaborated on that. <laughs> Is that after your hockey career? <laughs> this was actually before, believe it or not. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh wow. my god. The life Garrett has lived in 21 years. I know. It's crazy. 22, aren't you? 23 in two weeks. Whatever. Jeez. 23? I feel like he just turned 21. Right? He's a baby. He's a baby. But he's been a professional hockey player, according to him. He's been... Steve Jobs. He's been a part of the Steve Jobs operation of apparently the interweb. Boy. I got stories. (laughs) Apparently. (laughs) <laughs> he probably invented shipping. He did. <laughs> did you? No, I, I don't. I don't know a place in shipping. No, I don't, I don't have a. Uh, yeah, we, we didn't get. We didn't get down that road yet. No, that was a good joke. <laughs> Noah, I like it. Hey, we one. filled the ship. We yeah, got some extra room. What should I we do? It. Hey, Gary, why don't you load them packages? <laughs> Noah's Ark. <laughs> hey, yep, what? that's the one he's talking about, bud. That's the. That's the one. So proud of you. But with that, I'm Brandon. <laughs> I'm Jesse. Thanks for talking shop and shop, sir. <laughs>